Welcome friends. Uh, in this video, I am making an attempt to explain the concept of long-term capital gain, which arises on transfer of listed shares. Uh, give me one minute to share my screen with you. And uh, for this purpose, uh, for the purpose of explaining you the provisions, I have to refer to the section 112A of Income Tax Act 1960. Yes, friends. And uh, this section deals with capital gain. So as you know, capital gain arises when there is a transfer of capital asset. And here we are talking about long-term capital gain, which arises and transfer of long-term capital asset. And this particular section, since this covers uh, equity shares and some units, here uh, asset will be treated or the equity shares which are listed will be treated as long-term capital asset only when they're held for a period of more than 12 months. Other kind of assets, many of you might be aware of, that the holding period may be sometimes 36 months, sometimes 24 months. But in this case, when we're talking about listed equity shares, the holding period should be 12 months or more. In that case only, uh, it will be treated as, treated as long term capital asset. Yeah. And if, uh, and the, in fact, this section covers about uh, three kinds of assets that not only equity shares, it covers equity shares in a company then units of equity-oriented fund, as well as units of business trust. And in, for all these three kind of equity shares, if the capital gain, which is the long-term capital gain, is in excess of rupees 1 lakh rupees, then on that excess amount, capital gain tax has to be paid at the rate of 10%. There is no indexation. It has to be paid at 10%. Right? For example, if the Long term capital is 1 lakh 50,000, on which 1 lakh will be not taxable. 1 lakh will not be taxable. The excess 50,000 rupees is taxable at the rate of 10%. That means 5,000 rupees is to be paid. There are certain conditions. First thing we have to see when you are talking about this equity shares, we have to ensure that STT, that is security transaction tax, is paid both at the time of acquisition as well as at the time of transfer. This condition we have to check. And if you're talking about an unit of equity oriented fund, you have to ensure that STD is paid on transfer. And if it is an unit of a business trust, we have to also check that STD is paid on transfer. Okay, only in case of equity shares, you have to see that STD is paid both at the time of acquisition as well as at the time of transfer. And in this context, we have to remember three more uh, related things. First of all, we have to see that uh, this capital gain tax is payable at the rate of 10%. And uh, if basic exemption limit is not existed, then one can avail that basic exemption limit. As you can avail the basic exemption limit, which may be 2.5 lakh, 3 lakh, 5 lakh, depends for the types of assets. So that basic exemption limit can be available. And uh, if the SSC is eligible for chapter six a deductions, on this capital gain amount, chapter six a deduction cannot be claimed. For the remaining income, excluding this capital gain, chapter six a deduction can be claimed. In the same way, if the SSC is eligible for section 87A rebate, that also he cannot claim on this capital gain amount. For the remaining income, he can claim the rebate under section 87A. This is the summary of the entire provision. The provision, if you want to read, I have summarized in the subsequent slides. This is this you can go through. This particular slide explains that three kinds of assets are covered here in this particular section. One is equity shares in a company units of equity-oriented fund, units of business trust, and rate of tax is 10%. And this 10% is applicable only on the ex amount in excess of 1 lakh rupees. And certain conditions uh, apply, as you know, regarding security transaction tax, STT. And however, if uh, the assets that you are thinking about is not covered in this particular section 112A, then tax is to be paid as per the provisions of section 112 not under 
And normally, capital gain is calculated in this manner. This is the computation table. Many of you might be aware of. We first of all compute the full value of consideration, that is sales consideration of an asset. Therefrom, we deduct the expenditure in card only or exclusively in connection with transfer of capital asset. In this connection, there might be some brokerage which is paid that will be deducted. After deduction, we'll be getting net sales consideration. Therefrom, the cost of acquisition is to be deducted. There will not be any deduction. There will not be any indexation for this cost of acquisition. Only cost of acquisition will be deducted. And uh, after this deduction, we'll be getting long-term capital gain. There will be no cost of improvement or index cost of improvement. This deduction will not be there. So this is how we can compute the long-term capital gain. Right. Now you might be thinking how to compute this cost of acquisition. So this particular slide explains you that thing. Cost of acquisition, when acquired, you might have paid some amount. But this particular provision, that is 112A, is applicable from 2018 onwards. So in case, in case of cost of acquisition of listed equity shares, which is acquired before 1st February 2018, that means up to January 31st, 2018. In that case, it shall be deemed to be higher of the following amounts. Two things are there, A, B. First of all, actual cost of acquisition we have to take. Then B, B has got two parts and we have to take the lower amount. That is, first part is the fair market value of such shares as in January 31st, 2018. And two, actual sales constitution growing on its transfer. So two aspects are there, fair market value and sales constitution. We have to take the lower. And that lower figure has to be compared with the actual cost of acquisition. We have to take the higher. So if you look at the picture, it will be more clear. First, let us compare the fair market value of such shares as in January 31st, 2018 with the actual sales consideration accruing on its transfer. And after comparing these two, we'll take the lower figure. Then that lower figure will be compared with actual cost of acquisition of such as. And here we have to take the higher figure. So at, in two steps, we have to complete the computation of cost of acquisition in case shares are acquired before February 1, 2018. So you can take an example. Suppose fair market value is 10,000 rupees. Actual sales consideration is 8,000 rupees. We have to take the lower. Lower one is 8,000 rupees. And that 8,000 rupees has to be compared with the cost of acquisition. Let us assume that is 12,000 rupees. And in this comparison, we have to take the higher figure. Higher is 12,000 rupees. So my cost of acquisition shall be deemed to be 12,000 rupees. Right. Okay. Now, uh, next concept is that let us like, try to learn how to get this fair market value. Fair market value is relevant for computation of cost of acquisition. Fair market value shall, be, shall mean the highest price which is quoted on the stock exchange as on January 31st, 2018. Now you might be thinking if that particular date, the stock is not traded, what to do? So in that situation, that means if there is no trading on 31st January 2018, then we can take the highest price of such shares on a date immediately preceding January 31st, 2018. That means preceding date can be taken if there is no trading on January 31st, 2018. If it is traded, we have to take the highest value, highest price of January 31st, 2018. If it is not traded, we have to take a date immediately preceding January 31st, 2018. Now, one more concept also we need to appreciate at this stage. This, uh, this is a, we are talking about the possibility. It is possible that the this equity shares which you are talking about may not be listed in the stock exchange as on 31st January 2018, but listed at the time of transfer. That means at the time of transfer, it is listed. 
button 31st january 2018 it is not placed how to handle this situation here the provision says in this situation what to do the cost of only state says january 31st 2018 it is not listed the so cost of unlisted shares as increased by cost inflation index for the financial year 2017-18 shall be deemed to be fair market value. That means the cost of unlisted shares needs to be indexed to arrive at their fair market value as on 31st January 2018. Here indexation is required. I think this concept is clear. And if this also, this particular section also covers units and in case units which are not listed in recognized stock exchange. Right. So we have seen this thing, business trust units and units of equity oriented form. If these units are not listed in the recognized stock exchange, then we can take the NIV, that is net asset value, as on January 31st, 2018. Right. And lastly, we covered three important concepts. First concept is that basic exemption limit can be added. Right. If the total income is uh, less than, low total capital gain is less than the basic exemption limit and as it doesn't have any other income, it need not have to pay tax. The provision says where the total income, uh, just one second, uh, the provision says where the total income as reduced by such long-term capital gain is below the maximum amount which is not chargeable to tax, then the long-term capital gain for this purpose shall be reduced by the amount by which total income so reduced falls sort of maximum amount which is not chargeable to income tax. That means one can get the benefit of basic exemption limit to the extent not existed for computation of capital gain tax. So to that extent, my capital gain amount will be reduced to the extent of basic exemption limit. So basic exemption limit, which may be 2.5 lakh, maybe 3 lakh, maybe 5 lakh, that benefit can be aware. Right? Ah, okay. This provision also provides that chapter 6 a deduction will not be aware in respect or with respect to this particular income, to this particular capital gain. Chapter six, deduction, uh, chapter 6 a deduction can be added in respect of any other income, but not the income which is generated by uh, which is a long-term capital gain by sale of equity shares, which is covered under section 12A. If you read the provision, it says if the gross total income of an asset includes long-term capital gain, which is referred in this particular section. The deduction under this chapter 6a shall be allowed from the gross total income as reduced by such capital gain. That means chapter 6a deduction will not be available. Similarly, 87a deduction will not be available. 87a deduction will be available for the rest of the income, not on this capital gain. Right? So this is the summary of the entire provision. I think this is useful to you. Thank you very, very much.